everyone, I'm Tiana Summers reporting for Kids First, and today I'm speaking with Ms. Caitlin Henderson about her work on National Geographic's A Real Bug's Life. Ms. Henderson is an invertebrate specialist, bug wrangler, photographer, writer, and presenter. She created She's Got Legs, which is her own online platform where she travels the Australian landscape ph photographing and writing about lesser known inhabitants. Welcome to Kids First. Thanks so much. Hi. Of course. I'm so great to be able to speak with you today. Super excited to hear about your experience with the Real Bugs Life. So let's just start there. Talk to me about what it was like working on a Real Bugs Life. Uh, so I worked as part of the team at Mini Beast Wildlife. Uh, so we uh, basically work with bugs um, and that's that's uh, uh, we work with them with cameras a lot. So we, we had all these bugs that we had to basically get to perform naturally behind the camera in the studio situation. Uh, so they came to us and said, we'd like to see these species. We'd like to see them doing these uh, behaviors that they do in the wild. So we had to work out how to get those to display on the camera. Um, so that's always a lot of fun. Um, and particularly I worked with uh, peacock spiders uh, so those are very very small jumping spiders and they're absolutely gorgeous uh, and we uh, worked with uh, these spiders sort of all the way through from when they were like tiny tiny like millimeter long babies all the way up wow. to um, adults which are still very very small so getting those to sort of uh, sit in front of the camera and and do their thing uh, is always a bit of a challenge, but it's it's always very rewarding and a lot of fun. Getting to work with bugs, I'm actually not very much a fan of bugs, but I definitely think that it sounds like an interesting world to work in. Um, and I know you've already been working with bugs as a specialist. What drew you to helping out specifically with the episode Tiny Heroes Down Under? It's just a really interesting concept to kind of do a, a more story-based sort of um almost human sort of approach to uh, these bugs. A lot of the time we sort of use bugs as a bit of a, like an alien factor or kind of a scary thing um, or just very, almost very dry sort of, you know, this is what it's doing. It's out there, you know, digging around the leaf litter or something. But it's really nice to bring that emotion to what's going on for a bug and give it a different, uh, give us a way to sort of relate to them um, and feel for them. That's That was really rewarding. Yeah, that's good. I definitely got that um, from getting to see some of the episodes. I definitely see how you do take the bugs and you humanize them. And you, I know you touched on how people usually see bugs as, you know, scary or alienize them. What do you feel is the biggest misconception with bugs? Oh, there's so many, but I think working on an episode where the star of the show is a spider really kind of flips the script about spiders, uh, especially in Australia. An Australian spider, um, I mean, we talk all the time about how our spiders are like so dangerous and so scary, and we really play it up, especially internationally, like, don't come here, you know, everything's going to kill you. But uh it was really great to be able to show a spider in this like cute, curious, interesting way instead of leaning on the scary aspects of it. Because that is definitely, you know, in, in terms of spiders, the biggest misconception is that they're dangerous. In Australia, almost every spider we have is harmless to people. Um, we have a couple of dangerous ones that are very famous um, and that sort of, that sort of goes for spiders around the world as well. You know, there's very few famous dangerous spiders and the rest are just little uh, fluffy, harmless friends, realistically. Uh, and that's sort of, it, it's good to get that perspective out a bit more and see this cute little fellow who really isn't going to hurt a person in any way and just talk about the other aspects of its life instead of if it's going to bite or not. That's great. I like that you're able to do that with this show. I do not like spiders at all, but from hearing you talk about it, I definitely never really think about that. Like when I see a spider, I'm just like, oh my God, it's a spider. But you never really think of that. They're pretty much like us. They have lives. Some may have kids. So I, I like that aspect of the show. Yeah. That's and, definitely um, right. There's so much more to them. Yeah, which is good to know. 
Um, while you were working on this show, what are some new experiences or knowledge you were able to gain? Every time you work with an animal, you're learning more about how, what makes it tick, what makes it do its thing. Um, and uh, we had some beautiful uh, weevils in that we were working with. Um, and these are Botany Bay weevils. They're a really gorgeous color. And it was amazing seeing how well they fly. This is not something I get to um, encounter very often, but we had them sort of flying around our studio. Uh, and um, that was a pretty spectacular experience to see them lifting up their little wing covers and these delicate little wings coming out and these beetles zooming around everywhere. Um, and uh, I also got to see a lot about the, the sort of the life cycle of the peacock spider. It's amazing how small they are when they hatch out of their tiny, tiny eggs and how quickly they head off on their own to to start looking after themselves. Uh, so it was really interesting to see how they work as these tiny little sort of pinpricks <laughs> with legs. Um, so, yeah, that there are there's always new things to, to learn and see when you're working with um, these kinds of animals. That's good. And like speaking on like them being interesting, what do you think is the most interesting species that you've gotten to work with? So the team itself, we worked with quite a lot of species. Um, and one of those was the bombardier beetle, which has a chemical defense where it sort of superheats this liquid and like um, uses that to defend itself, which is a crazy defense to have this like just basically a kettle of a beetle like wow. making really really hot liquid yeah so that's that's an amazing species um that was that was very very exciting um we also had uh venomous ants that jump uh oh. called jumping jacks yeah so they're pretty spectacular um but you know i i do get really used to working with the peacock spiders because i've worked with them quite a lot now but i do need to take a step back sometimes and just kind of remind myself how spectacular they are because um, they are a spider that dances to impress the female. They're absolutely spectacularly colored and decorated. And, uh, you know, sometimes I just need to remind myself, wow, this is, this is an absolutely amazing animal. I'm used to it now, but, you know, if you were seeing this for the first time, which a lot of people will be when they watch this show, um, mm. it's incredible. So and realistically, every every animal that I get to work with is amazing, but all in their own different ways. Yeah, they sound incredible. A lot of the species I've never heard of, but even though I said I'm not really much of a fan of bugs, now you have me thinking, like, those actually sound pretty cool, like a spider that dances. I've never heard of that before. And then just for one last question, what do you think is the overall message that you want people to get when they watch this show? What I heard people can take away from this is just that these animals are like every other animal uh they might be small they might be kind of funny looking but the same empathy and the same uh, value that you can put on a big fluffy mammal or a bird I hope that people can learn to sort of um extend that to our little bug friends and see their value uh, in the environment, what they do to take care of the world and keep keep everything running how it should, because we are coming to a time where we really need to focus on protecting everything as a whole. And we can't be selective. We can't say, I want to protect the fluffy ones, but I don't want the spiders and I don't want the bugs. So I think seeing this side of them, I really want people to connect to them in a new way. Um, and and learn that they are really valuable. Thank you so much, Ms. Henderson, for speaking with me. I had a great time. And for those watching, be sure to watch Real Bugs Life Season 2, streaming January 15th on Disney+. Plus. That's all for this review for Kids First. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our next reviews or interviews. Again, I'm Tiana Sermons. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye.